right, it is time for our TBR for October. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you the books that I plan on reading during the month of October. There are a lot of them and I am participating in a lot of things, so this is going to be a longer video. I'm going to try not to ramble too much, but um, it happens. <laughs> happens. I just get excited about sharing. Oh my goodness. So um, I will put jump links down below uh, because I have sort of split my TBR into sort of three different sections. The first up will be social reading, so buddy reads and book club picks. Then in the middle I have my projects and challenges and random reads, uh, stuff that I'm working on for external reasons, not external reasons, but like uh, personal challenges and stuff like that and just sort of like random choices. <laughs> And, and then uh, the third part will be the my TBR for the Halloween creature feature extravaganza, which is a reading challenge created by John from Books of Blood and co-hosted by Jason from Jason's Weird Reads. I'm really excited to participate in this. Um, it is obviously a Halloween October spooky themed readathon with five reading prompts, and so I will leave jump links to that as well as my project challenges as well as my buddy reads. But I'm going to get right to it because there are a lot of books on the TBR. I tried to pare down. And, but I was not that successful, so hopefully I will read all the things. <laughs> Hopefully. First up, buddy reading. I am going to, I'm assuming that I am going to be continuing The Monsters of Verity by reading Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. Um, I am reading the series with Izzy, Punk Rock Girl PA, uh, and we read uh, the, the Savage Song in September. I'm actually still in the middle of reading it. I'm pre-filming this a bit, and so the live show hasn't come up, so I don't have 100% confirmation, but I imagine we're going to read book two in the two book series in October, because that's generally how things roll, um, and and uh, the live shows for that are hosted on Izzy's channel, which will be linked down below. Everyone I mentioned, all of the readathons, all of the books, everything will be listed and linked down below. Um, so yeah, this is actually a YA, I thought it was an urban fantasy series, but to be honest, it feels a bit more post-apocalyptic to me. It's a bit darker. There's some things that I like, some some new to me uh, types of things in it, and um, it probably could also fit in the Halloween Creature Feature Extravaganza somewhere, um, so I might have to double Double up if I fall behind. <laughs> I'm already thinking about falling behind and the month hasn't even begun. Anyway, so if you have read the series or if you've only read the first book and you want to read Our Dark Duet and finish off the duology, feel free to join us in finishing off the Monsters of Verity series. I am looking forward to it. Um, and then I'm participating in the book club from um, Nicole from Who Picked This Book. Her and Jen Jen have a book club where they have m Wednesday nights, they have live shows on Nicole's channel, Who Picked This Book, and they are reading Julianne Lindsay for not only the rest of the month, but the rest of the year. So if you've not read any Julianne Lindsay yet, you have lots of opportunity to do so. And in the month, of October they're going to be reading two intrigue novels so romantic suspense novels and two cozy mysteries so we are going to start off with Shadow Point Deputy and then Marked by the Marshal. These are both Harlequin intrigues. I haven't read an intrigue for quite some time. I'm sort of like romantic suspense is sometimes like I don't like I don't I like the romantic part but not just the suspense part so I am curious to see how I will do with these uh, but I have read some over the years. I just haven't read an intrigue for quite some time and then we're also going to be reading Cozy Mysteries, Apple Cider Slaying, and Pulp friction. With, and this one has cats on the cover, so that's always a win. Um, so I'll leave links down below to um, Nicole's channel, and there will be live shows, as I said, Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. EST, 6 p.m. PST. Um, and actually on October, oh, sorry, September 30th, they're actually going to have Julianne Lindsay on a live show, which is very, very exciting. So I think this TBR, this, this video will go up before then, so feel free to check it out and have questions ready for Julia and Lindsay. And then where are we going from here? Oh, I have the wrong, wait a moment, I have to go to a different board if I, I am remiss in, I forgot to add. Okay, so I'm also going to be rereading Slave to Sensation by Nalini Singh. This is the first book in the Psy Changeling series, um, and which is a uh, 
it really bridges the gap between paranormal romance and urban fantasy, to be honest, because the world, it has such a long arcing plot, and there are some sort of like science fiction elements of it, but it has a different couple per book, which is sort of like the paranormal fantasy rules. Anyway, so this is actually the book club pick for New to Swoon, which is a romance book club hosted by Deja um, of Deja's Book World, and Emma is reading. I will leave their Twitter down below, and they had, uh, it was a very close race, but between uh, Slave to Sensation and Dark Lover, like it was just just moments apart. And then sadly, the gargoyle romance had like no chance, no chance. Hard to stone, no chance. So I'm going to have to go find that, read that, because I want to read gargoyle romances. Anyway, I decided I want to um, play along and hang out with them as they read uh, Slave to Sensation. Um, and it's really co a cool idea, the new to Swing Book Club. What it is is they, they both want to read more romance. So they're picking a trope or a genre or a subgenre per month, and then they are reading that book and having a live show. And uh, Nicole from Who Picked This Book is the guest host for the month because she reads a lot of paranormal romance. So I think that's a really fun setup too. I always love that. I think it's from, for the, the setup, I like the combination of people who are doing something new or newer to something, plus someone who is familiar with something. It just reminds me of the Potential cast. I don't know if anyone um, listened to that podcast. It was a Buffy bot podcast, and I think it had two people who had never seen the series and two people who had seen the series and loved the series, and they went episode by episode. Oh, it was so good, the Potential cast. Let me know. I have so many good memories of that, and um, I'm sure there's Buffy fans out there. <laughs> Okay, where are we going next? Oh, I am now in the wrong board. Just give me one moment. So those are my social wreath reads for the month. So now we're going to head on over to my projects and challenges and a little of everything. Um, and I am going for my non one of my nonfiction picks is going to be they said this would be fun. Race, Campus Life, and Growing Up by Eternity Martis. This is a Canadian novel. It follows a woman who is from Toronto, and then she goes to Western University, which is in London, Ontario, um, and it's about her experience uh, of being on campus and how, like, I imagine it was not as fun as expected. And um, so it is my nonfiction book about race that I'm picking for this month. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to read it in ebook or audio, um, but those are the two options that I am looking at so far. Um, and I really wanted to add a Canadian novel, a not novel, a Canadian nonfiction book uh, in the mix because I think everything else I've read so far has been American. So I want to get a Canadian perspective perspective and a woman's perspective. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. Um, now I have some books on my physical TBR. This one is Confessions by Kene Minato not entirely sure on the oh the riveting international sensation that inspired the oscar shortlisted foreign film i did not know that i did not know that this was a birthday present from my brother so i'm looking that's why i decided to um add it to my tbr this month and because it was uh translated by steven schneider schneider yeah, it's translated from the Japanese. So I'm actually, now I am, I had no, I, I am out of the loop a bit on film because I did not pick up on that. So anyway, ah, it's a book to film, book to film adaptation. That's one of my priority categories. So I'm going to get two wins on this. Yes, actually three. Anyway, I'm excited. This looks actually a bit sinister. It sounds like there's, I think it follows a teacher and there there's an incident and then stuff I don't know I don't want to know it's not that long of a book it's all it like it's like 230 pages and it looks really interesting and um so I'm just going to let the story unfold without knowing anything about it other than now I know it's a book to film adaptation that makes me so happy so happy so I'm going to read that um I am going to read for we have and then we have some non-fiction here I'm going to read art to d2's guide to folding and doodling by Tom Engelberger. And uh, this is what it says on the tin. It's an art book and it shows you how to do origami and encourages you to doodle and draw and teaches you how to draw R2D2. Like, these are all awesome things. And so I like reading nonfiction art books and sometimes, and right now I'm reading a, like a lexicon, like an A to Z type definition book. So I think reading something, oh, it gives you origami paper. 
So I am looking forward to uh, learning how to draw all of these things. Oh my god, different kinds of eyes. <laughs> so I think this will be a lot of fun and I like to have, sort of, it's nice to have something that's sort of like an activity book. <laughs> Um, also, a totally different vibe. I'm going to read Water Strider by Karen Hoffman. This is a book of poetry. Um, I think it's Canadian. Yeah, Frontenac House, Calgary. Well, that's the publisher. Um, I got it at a library book sale uh, recently, and um, I'm trying to work through some of the books that I picked up this year, even though I'm not going to any more library book sales, but still... I have lots to enjoy, so I want to make sure that I do enjoy them. So this is a book of poetry that I'm going to check out. And then also, this one's a biggie. Whew, this one's a biggie. Sunken Cities. Oh, it's so heavy. Egypt's <laughs> Lost Worlds. Edited by Frank Godigo and Aurelia Mason Burgoff. There you go. And this is... I think this, this is actually, I think, from a particular museum exhibition um yeah the british museum so it is non-fiction and underwater stuff and history stuff and art stuff so it's uh oh it's going to be a bit interesting to wrangle reading it um but some some pages don't have lots of text so maybe it won't be too hard there's there's a, there's a fair amount of underwater stuff that's just gorgeous just gorgeous, but it is heavy, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So I am very much looking forward to reading that. Um, and then I am very surprised to say, um, I think I'm going to very, 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 very lightly participate in Victober, which I've never participated in before. It's about reading Victorian literature. Not that I'm against that. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a meteor um, uh, group of books. And I should have, I just finished the diary, diary of a nobody, and I had no idea it was Victorian. So I should have just read that a couple weeks later. But anyway, I am going to take on a biggie and I am going to try Tess of the Dubervilles by Thomas Hardy. I read Far From the Madden Crowd many years ago or a couple years ago and it took I think three or five tries. It was quite challenging for me to read it but it was also quite an accomplishment to finally finish it like to finally get it uh, I think it has a beautiful writing style but I don't necessarily like what he's saying so I'm very curious this is one that I don't know what the thing is about this one this one definitely has a thing I don't know what it is it's okay I'll find out when I read it but even like if you just get the sense of this cover and I have a bit of a sense of it because sometimes it has a subtitle like it has Tess of the Duberville's um, and it's kind of like, hmm, and I'm not sure, I have a feeling I'm not going to like the gender stance on things, but I am curious. I want to, I want to read it and give it a shot. So this is one cover I found, and then this is another. So, and this one says she's no angel, so I have a feeling it has a sense of something to do with judgment over women's behavior, I imagine that is what I'm getting, even from not necessarily that doesn't tell you too much. That's very atmospheric, but doesn't you know say so I don't know I'm gonna give it a shot um for it uh, was published in 1891 and for Victober for, for it to qualify the Victorian period it's between 1837 and 1901 so it counts I think Thomas Hardy is quite as strongly associated with Victorian literature so um he's a good bet for that and uh yeah so I wish me luck on that that's going to be the big read. One of the big, one of the two big reads of the month is going to be Tess of the Duberwells. And then where am I going from here? Okay, so, and then I'm very, um, this is a light tie-in. I don't think this qualifies for any actual challenges, but I'm going to read After the Wedding by Courtney Milan. This is the second book in the Worth Saga. It is a romance, historical romance set during the Victorian time period. Um, and I really enjoyed the first book, but I actually mostly enjoyed the 1.5 book. Her Every Wish, that was wonderful, um, and 2.75, which is, I can't remember what it was called, but it, that one featured, uh, it was a um, female-female relationship, 
and one of the, I think one of the women was 70 and one of the women was in her 60s. It was awesome. And the 1.5 had an interracial couple and a woman who wanted to open her own business. So I, Courtney Milan is amazing. So I'm curious about this one. Um, this one features, I think, the sister from the first story. Um, and, uh, and I think maybe she got married because she needed to, but doesn't necessarily want to be married. I don't know. No, I actually have no idea. I, like, maybe, maybe that's what happened? I don't know. I will find out. And it's part of my Stacking the Series challenge, which I want to read five books from this month, um, and that would be one of them. Um, and also on my Stacking the Series, I am going to continue to read the works of Ibsen. Uh, my play for the month is going to be The Pretenders, and it actually was written in 1863, so... It, it, I don't think it qualifies as Victorian because it's Norwegian. <laughs> I think I think that DQs it. But anyway, and it's set in the 13th century, so it's not. It's so it's. I don't know. Anyway, that's my Ibsen play of the month. I'm actually getting close. My goal for this year is nine, and I think I'm on seven, and this will be eight. So I'm actually going getting pretty close on that, which is great. Um, I'm also going to read Heartstopper by Alice Osman. Um, and this is a graphic novel, and it's the first in the series. It is, uh, it's, it features rugby, a rugby player who starts to fall for his friend, I think. So it's a boy, it's a male-male romance, but it's YA or younger. Um, but I don't know how much into romance it gets into, because he's sort of, like, interested, but, you know. And this one, oh my gosh, I put this on hold back in... June, like during Pride Month, and my hold just came in. So, wow. So I'm going to read it close to the beginning of the month so I can return it and so someone else can enjoy it. And um, so I'm really looking forward to checking that out. Um, I'm also going to work on some of my A to Z challenges. I have both an A to Z challenge for, well, I have three. I have a romance one, which I'm not doing great at, but I'm still making progress. And But my manga a to Z and my graphic novel A to Z I want to work on pretty because I think I can make it this year actually for my graphic novels I only need six more letters so I need I'm going to go for three letters for graphic novels and three letters for manga uh, and see if I can achieve getting 26 titles one for each letter of the alphabet read um, in those different formats so wish me luck for that I haven't picked them yet I had I you know I will share them in my Friday reads when I end up picking them probably um, and um, uh, because uh, it's getting close and some of the letters like I got Q last month <laughs> Q, so that was good but um, I don't even remember what the letters are so now now we get on to the Halloween creature feature extravaganza TBR this is going to be so much fun so as I mentioned this is um, hosted by John from Books of Blood and Jason from Jason's Weird Reads is co-hosting it ha it is going to be running for the entire month of October. There are five, five prompts or challenges and actually both John and Jason have done both an announcement video as well as a recommendations suggestions video. So if you hear these prompts and you're like I want to do that but I don't I can't think of anything for it check out their videos because they have recommendations for you to enjoy and I'm actually really excited about this. I, I remember seeing Jason's video in early and when it came out in August and I was like oh, that sounds so fun. <laughs> and I am, I am horrible at seasonal reading, like horrible. And I'm not that great at month long readathons, but I did ba not bad during the summer fling. So I, I think, you know, I think hopefully I'll do well. I don't know. I just, the prompts are so good and I'm like enjoying the spooky season. So I'm going to give it a shot, but I have no idea how successful I'm going to be. But I guess you could say that about pretty much anything. So here are the challenges. So the first challenge is only a woman can break his spell. Read a vampire novel written by a female author. Now this is one I definitely had lots to choose from, especially if you like paranormal romance, like you are set. There are lots to choose from. I decided to go with My Soul to Keep by Tana Reeve Du. This is the first in the African Immortals series, um, and this is going to be my big read for the readathon because this book is 500 pages. Um, and so, and I've wanted, to, it was, I ended up on a TBR, was it earlier this year or last year? I'm not sure. Um, and so it is a vampire novel, as you know. 
as meets the prompt. Um, and um, yeah, I'm really excited about trying it out. It looks really dark. It has short chapters, which is what made me go, okay, maybe I can do it. Because I've not, generally speaking, I've not read a lot of longer books this year. I've been way more in the 200 to 300 pages. So 500 pages was a little like, mm, but it's going to be like the big one. So I am really looking forward to checking this out. Um, and so that is my pick for that prompt. The next one is Every Man Who Is Pure of Heart. Read a vampire novel with the world wolf in, or, wolf or moon in the title and also you can, uh, or werewolf. Now I'm, I'm going to, this one I'm getting a little let's say creative instead of cheating. And I'm going to go with East of the Sun and West of the Moon and other Norwegian fairy tales by George Weeb Descent. Um, Descent? Um, now, so this has moon in the title. I am don't know for sure if there is a vampire or, or werewolf story in this. Um, and I did pick out a couple of vampire stories, but I knew that if I picked a vampire novel, or sorry, a werewolf novel, as well as uh, my soul to take that I would either only read one or get halfway through both. So I am going a little creative on this one and picking out this choice. Um, but it is fairy tales, so it is or folk folklore. So um, maybe maybe there's a werewolf. Hopefully, I do have a couple of backups for some of these choices, including for the werewolf. There is uh, Vicky Lewis Thompson has um, I think it's called a werewolf in Manhattan, which is like a contemporary rom-com paranormal romance so there there's there's that option there's that option we shall see um okay so next up <laughs> i swear i'm not cheating all that often but i do like there's not as many werewolf novels if you're looking for one mongrels is really great i really enjoyed that one okay so number three to die, to be truly dead, that must be glorious. Read a horror novel featuring a dead or undead character, for example, a ghost, vampire, zombie, etc. I actually decided to go with nonfiction for this one, and I'm going to read Haunted Toronto by John Robert Colombo. This, there's also a Ghosts of Ontario. I'm Canadian, I'm in Toronto, so that's why I decided to go with Haunted Toronto. This is actually, it splits up Toronto into north, south, east, west and then also central um to central east and west like be with young street as the barrier and it has um i looked at the table of contents and it has like like casaloma and then it has like the seances of euclid and like so i just i just think this will be a lot of fun and because it says haunted i imagine there will be ghost stories but there might be stories beyond just ghosts it could be i don't know like specters or I don't know. I don't know. Like more, more things. Um, and the other one was Ghosts of Ontario. So I imagine that'll only be ghosts. Mind you, that one seemed like it had some more historical stuff like Johnny McDonald and stuff. So like, so I don't know. But so I could read either, but I think I'm leaning towards Haunted Toronto because it is my city. And um, I don't know, maybe it'll freak me out too much. Maybe I should read the Ontario one and be a little like more displaced from the <laughs> from the action. And then I'm also going to read, because I happen to be in the middle of the series and I'm really enjoying it, I'm also going to continue reading the manga series Ajin Demi-Human. And I think this qualifies because they're... <sighs> It's a little, I'm, I'm still a little, un, I'm in volume four and I'm a little unclear what the Ajin are. Like, it sounds like they are, like, the, the humans are immortal. Like, they live past dying. So that makes me feel like it qualifies because they die, but then they're still alive. And then the Ajin, like the spectery, I'm not even sure what they are. It's creepy. I think of it as horror. It's not necessary. It's not ghosts. I don't know what it is, but it's creepy. So I hope that counts. <laughs> I hope that counts. Number four is it's in the tree. It's coming. But when I hear that, I hear it's in the trees. It's coming. Uh, which is the beginning uh, of a uh, Kate Bush song. So that's, I think that is actually what got me to participate in the readathon, is that it reminded me of the, um, is it Hounds of Love? Uh, yeah, is it Hounds of Love or Clown? No, it's Hounds of Love. So yeah, I could hear that right away. And then I was like, I have to participate in this readathon. So the prompt is for this one, read a book featuring a zoo, z uh, sorry, cryptozoological creature or a cryptoid. Um, so Sasquatch, Yeti, Chupacabra, Loch Ness Monster. And the sort of qualifier for that is that it's something we're not 100% uh, are, we're not 100% sure it exists. So I decided to go with 
the chupacabra ate the candelabra. And this is a kid's picture book by Mark, Mark Tyler Nobleman, illustrated by Anna Aranda. And I um, I got this in the library. I searched chupacabra and saw what came up. This is one of the few things that did come up. I actually had to put it on hold and it came through. So I'm definitely going to be reading this at the beginning of the month so other people can enjoy it and I can return it. Um, and so I'm really excited about this. Um, I think it actually follows three goats. Like I think these are three goats that are scared of the chupacabra. <laughs> So I think that will be a lot of fun. I had another book picked out, um, like a paranormal romance, but then I realized it didn't really fit the prompt because I don't think anyone necessarily believes that <laughs> dinosaur shapeshifters are real. <laughs> so I thought that that was one step too far. And if you're curious about that, that's Eternal Pleasures by Nina Bangs, which is the first in the Gods in the Night series. But I still might read it just because it's been on my TBR forever. But I don't think it's really, I don't think dinosaur shapeshifters are really considered a cryptozoological creature. <laughs> I don't know. It was crossing the line. It was crossing the line. So next up um, is five. And that is, that is, that is not dead, which can eternally lie, and a strange and with strange eons, even death may die. Read a book of cosmic or Lovecraftian horror written by a person of color. And I decided to go with The Battle of Black Tom by Victor Laval. This is a novella. It's about 160 pages. Um, and actually, this one was recommended to me by my brother earlier this year, so it was already on my radar, and it sounds like it fits the bill very well. And I'm actually really going to be happy to read this because I did read all of Lovecraft's um, short work, with the exception of one that I just was like, no. Um, and I didn't. And I got to say, I, I am very embarrassed to say that I did not know going in that so much of it and that so much of it was racist and so and that he's was pretty much known for being racist. I did not know that. And so I am happy to be reading something that is a bit of a response to that. Um, and so I'm really curious to uh, check out The Battle of Black Tom. And that is the last, the last book. Oh my goodness, we made it to the end. I do, as I said, I do have a bunch of backups for the um, creature feature. Um, I have a whole whack ton of paranormal romance. I actually don't think a paranormal romance ended up on the, on it. Oh, no, it didn't. That's so weird. That's so weird. Though, <laughs> dinosaurs. Anyway, and I'm not even totally sure for eternal pleasures if that's what it is. If it's dinosaur shaped dinosaurs, it might be dragons. I'm not sure. I am not sure. But I have lots of backups for that. The the werewolf one. And then there are two. There was actually a nonfiction werewolf one that sort of pulls the history of it in lore and that sounded interesting too but I decided for nonfiction to go with Haunted Toronto. I like to have a variety of different um, formats like a different like like having the kids book and the manga and the nonfiction and the fiction and the short work for me that really really helps me um, to have some variety as well as increases my chances of success because um, if I picked five novels I just now knowing myself over the years with readathons I know that I would make it through one and that's it. So I, I, I hope I hope it's okay to sort of get a little creative um, with the choices. And I'm really looking forward to seeing people's TBRs, especially for the werewolf one. I feel like that's not something that we see a lot. There's a lot of um, shifter romances. Um, so there's that, but not as much. And a lot of the werewolf ones, the, the couple of the ones I did find, they looked really, really dark. And I'm not always always for the really, really dark. I can do it sometimes, but not all the time. So I'll be very curious to see what people pick for that, as well as the cryptozoological creature, because I feel like, you know, we could, I like, you know, more of that, please, right? Like, that's just, like, it's just a great, um, it's a great, it's something great to really read about. And I am really curious to see what people's choices are for that. So, the, oh, there was one more. There was one more. I have a bonus. I forgot. I didn't. I I have one bonus and I didn't put this in a category because I don't know what it follows and that is A Night in Terror Tower by R.L. Stein. This is a Goosebumps book. I've been very, very lightly reading the Goosebumps books for the past couple years and this is the next in the sequence for me. But from the title and even from the cover, I don't know. It's a night in Terror Tower so it could be a werewolf. Seems unlikely. Um, it could be something undead could be a cryptozoological creature. I have no idea. So, um, and often the Goosebumps book, it's rarely in the Goosebumps books is it actually 
It's always a something. It's always a supernatural or paranormal something. It is almost never people. So, which is one of the things I like about it. Um, but I have no idea which category it's going to fit into. So, uh, but I haven't read one of the Goosebumps for a while. So I thought this would be a good time to get back to it. So there you go. There is my entire TBR. I know this was a long one. Thank you if you made it all the way to the end. Please let me know if you are participating in any of these events. The Halloween Creature Feature Extravaganza or the um, Buddy Reading our dark duet with me and Izzy or doing the book club reads with Nicole and Jen Jen or participating in new to swoon there's so many or Victober my goodness it is an event heavy month um, I am very much excited as I mentioned I will leave links down below for all of the books as well as all of the channels and events that I mentioned and uh, I think it's going to be a fun one so here is to a wonderfully spooky Victorian romancy monstery month thank you so much for watching <laughs>